Al Angelo here, A Plus Racing. And uh, I want to bring you today of how I put a crankshaft in a racing engine. Very similar to what I do with the uh, stock engines, um, but a couple little minor changes. So I have a block here that I've already got back from the machine shop. I took this block down, they honed it, they line bored it to make sure that the, 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 the tunnel where the crankshaft is sitting in is perfectly straight. They decked it, made sure that where the head surface is, is perfectly flat. Um, so this engine is clean. It's ready to go. I've taken it. I pressure washed it. So you, you get it back from the machine shop. Sometimes there's oil and, and little shavings on there. So you can take it to a car wash and blast it out real well. And then make sure you dry it right away. Otherwise, it rusts. So this one's all cleaned up, ready to go. I have done a few things to it since I got it back, but I'm going to show you what I did, and it was only to save me a little bit of time. So uh, one of the first thing I did is we have these little oil squirters right here, okay? And these go down, if you get a picture in there, they go down inside the block. So on the early models, there's a copper washer that goes on each side of this banjo, but on this NB, it doesn't come with the copper washers. So basically the way it just goes together is I take this, this hollow bolt and it's gonna go through the little injector like that. And I gotta make sure this little pin lines up with the hole down in here, right there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop this in. See if I can do it without dropping it on the floor. And I cleaned it with brake clean and uh, so that it would be nice and clean. And I blew through it with an air nozzle. Okay. I'm in the little hole, I got it on there. I'm gonna to torque it. And it actually gets torqued to 10 foot pounds. So I have a, a torque wrench here that goes from zero to about 40. So I'm gonna set this for 10, just for the fact that it doesn't get torqued very much. And I'm gonna to torque them all. So it's very little torque. Otherwise, you'll break them. I can feel a torque wrench click. When it's that low of a weight, it's not much of a click. And I should be finishing up this one. There it is. Okay, that's it. So those squirter tubes are all in there. I'm going to go ahead and take my main caps off now. Now the main caps are numbered. On a 1.8, they're numbered. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. On a 1.6, a lot of times they're not numbered. And uh, you got to be careful that you make sure you keep them in the order that they came off. So I'm going to very carefully make sure that I keep these in order. We'll get these mains off of here. And the number 4 is always casted into the fourth web. That one's pretty easy to identify. The other one's going to be a little difficult. Yeah, yeah, I know. You like my fancy speed handle action. That comes from years of building uh, automatic transmissions and molten and valve bodies. <laughs> Dang, valve bodies could have 30 bolts in there. We always do it with a speed handle. Okay. Keeping these in order. Okay, if you're... Uh, Watching this and you're in my class, you know you got to keep these things in order. So I don't like uh, my students to have these uh, mains off any longer than they absolutely have to because you'd be surprised how fast they grow legs and start moving around. All right. So I'm using racing bearings. So I'm going to put my main bearings in now. And I'm actually using the, uh, the, these race bearings right here, um, ACLs. They're pretty good, good price. They're a little, they're built a little different than a stock bearing. Obviously, if you've built engines before, you can see this is dark. Um, these are supposed to be for high revving engines, and well, we rev the snot out of these. If you look at the block, you'll see it's got these oil lube holes. So there is a bearing that has a hole, and then there is a bearing that doesn't have a hole. We want to make sure that we use the bearing with the hole. Otherwise, you're going to block off the oil passageway. So the bearing just sits in there and I've already made sure that this is all spotlessly clean. So the bearings are clean, the surface is clean. I'm going to go ahead and set in my main bearings. Okay. 
right. and I'm making sure that the lube hole shows you can see it right there okay and here's my last one all right so the bearings are all sitting down in there okay all right so the next thing I'm going to put in is what we call the thrust bearing and these are the thrust bearings right here so when you look at this thrust bearing you can see on one side of it it's just steel and flat and the other side has the babbit in the slots so the babbit size goes towards the crankshaft now the way I hold those on is I take a little assembly lube and I use this really thick gooey assembly lube because I really like this stuff okay so I'm just going to put some right here on my thrust and what that thrust does is it keeps the crankshaft from walking back and forth okay so and then I just set the bearing like that and then this side goes in like that all right I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of my assembly lube so whatever I put here on assembly lube is what I'm going to have for lubrication until the engine starts up so I want to make sure that I got a good supply of lubrication here so that I don't run my bearing dry. I'm going to put a little bit here on my on both sides of my thrust bearing here. Okay, so I've got those lube too. All right, well that looks good. Okay, the crankshaft. Here's the crank. Now, <sighs> Miata cranks are a little different than all the other crankshafts you really deal with. When they um this oil passageway here so that block is going to feed oil to this main bearing these are mains these are rods and the oil is going to travel through this hole after it lubricates and it has a passageway that goes from here to here so the oil going through here is going to come out here well mazda had to drill the hole right there and they they fill the end of the hole with a little ball so this is actually the hole they drilled to go from here to here the problem lies is when you've had a crankshaft that's been an engine for a long time and it develops trash on one side of the ball. And even if they machine the crankshaft, you take the crankshaft down, you have it turned, you're going to get metal particles in that one layer. And no matter how much you clean this, you'll never get that out. So here's the secret, okay? The secret is cleaning it out with brake clean. But there's a trick to it, so let me show you. All right, we've already did this yesterday. I like to spend at least a whole can on cleaning the crank. All right, so I'm going to use this plastic tube. Okay, and then I'm just going to bend the tip of it like that. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in there until I feel it fall into that little hole. Okay, and there it is. I'm going to block this side because there's a hole on this side. Okay. And now I'm going to squirt it. And you see it blasting out of there? Okay, so I do that until all of the black crud that's in there comes out. All right, that's how I clean up that channel. All right, so, and then I just dry the crankshaft off with a, with a nice clean towel. And I do that to every single one of these. And just to make sure that I have it all cleaned out okay now let's just we'll just double check everybody here so this one's right here I'm also going to get it on the back side and this one right here Okay, go this way. All right, I'm just double checking. I had some students do this yesterday, just double checking their work. Okay, this crankshaft's pretty clean. This is a standard crank, um, so it means it's never been turned. And that's kind of the crankshafts I look for when I'm when I'm looking for a, a an engine to build for a race car. Um, I mean, yeah, I'll use a 10, 10 crank if they've been turned 10 thousands. The problem with that is the trash that gets in the little holes. Okay, 
So I can tell this is standard crank. One, I already measured it. Two, when they turn them, they usually put paint markings up on top here to tell you that the crankshaft has been turned. So this one is a virgin crank. So I'm going to go ahead and set it in now. And I'm just going to be very careful, especially around those thrust bearings, as I draw slowly drop it into place. Okay, and I make sure my thrust bearings are staying there. I don't spin it because I don't want a bunch of goop going outside of the saddle there. Okay, so now I have my mains. So I'm going to start off with number one, and everything here is all clean as you can see. And I'm going to take a bearing, and I line up the little slot right there. And then I just push it into place like that. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit of, of uh, my assembly lube on there. And I'm going to set it in place. And it has an arrow right here that says number one. And the arrow faces that way. I'm going to take my bolts. And I'm going to put a little bit of lube on here too to help those... For when I go to torque it down. Okay. So the next one. Now I just repeat this process five more times. So I'm probably just going to go ahead and put these bearings all in. See what I'm doing here. So this engine is going to go into uh, my number 99 car. And um, it's headed for the 25 hour of Thunder Hill. If you don't know what that is, Thunder Hill is a racetrack uh, in Willows, California. It's the longest endurance race in North America. Um, it's 25 hours long, obviously. And uh, it's kind of like a pro am. There's a lot of professional racers there, and a lot of amateur racers there. Uh, and it's a blast. It's a lot of work. We won it last year um, with this very car that this engine is going to be going into, and which was real exciting because uh, I had an attempt to win it 17 times until I finally got a car that we were able to put it in first place. Yeah, we've got some seconds and some thirds, you know, but that's like kissing a good-looking cousin. <laughs> so uh, to win it, our division was exciting. Uh, we after 25 hours we only won by two laps, which is incredible. And the distance between first place and fourth place was about six laps. So uh, it was a very tight race, the whole race. Actually, kind of funny is that towards the end of the event, about six hours left to go, we uh, the alternator went out and it stopped charging. So I knew it was going to take me about 15 minutes to replace the alternator and that would have dropped us back to like almost last place so what I did is I put batteries on battery chargers and I practiced changing out the battery till I could change the battery out in under a minute and so when the battery got below 10.5 volts we'd call them in and then uh, I just changed the battery out so kind of ran on electric power there towards the end but it was enough for the win so I'm glad that we did it that way all right, so I'm not torquing these down. I'm just snugging them down with the speed handle. But I'm still going to use the same pattern that I would if I was torquing them. Just so that I make sure I don't get anything bound in here. I don't want anything bound up. All right. <clears throat> Anyhow, if you ever want to come out and watch the 25 hour, it's free. It's kind of exciting. And uh, to see all the cars some cars doing 240 miles an hour on the straight some of them look like they're doing 40 miles an hour on the straight so you know i can remember years ago we were racing and there was a honda fit in the field and i think we passed that car about every four laps so okay so i got the crank in bearings are in mains are in i'm going to go ahead and set the torque and i'm going to set this to 40 Okay, so 40 right there. All right. And I'm just going to bring it down. I'm not going to go the whole 40. I just kind of bring, you could do 20 and then do 40. 
So I'm just going to slowly, and I'm going to do this, this spiral pattern. Okay, so I did here, here. Bring it down. Bring it down. There. 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 So you see I'm just making a big spiral from the center. It's because I really want to make sure that, okay, now I'm going to do the 40. There's a click. Okay, now I'm going to come back and I'm just going to double, triple check my work. I mean, once this thing is, is in, it's in, you know. I mean, to get to this stage right here, you got a lot of work to pull the engine out of a car and tear it down to get to this. So everything I'm doing in here, I'm triple checking my work. Okay, if all my calculations were correct, this engine should spin like butter, <laughs> okay? If it's locked up, it means I screwed up, all right? So right now, this thing should spin like it's gliding on glass. Here we go. Oh, yeah. All right, so there it is. Yeah, that's butter right there, I tell you. All right, now I'm going to check that thrust bearing. And there is a, a dial indicator you can put on the end here. But I can just move it back and forth. And if I shut up for a second, you can just hear it moving slightly back and forth. And that should be just a few thousandths of an inch. So I'll check that out with a micrometer. But this looks pretty good, okay? I've kept everything clean. We spin good. So the next step is to go ahead and put the pistons in and the, the rod bearings and all that. So we'll make another video on that. So right now I'm going to bag this. I'm going to cover it all up with like a trash bag because I don't want any dirt or anything getting in here. The cleaner I can keep my engine parts as I go together, the more power the engine is going to make and the longer it's going to last. All right. Hey, if this has been helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, what's the holdup? Look at what you're getting all for free. This is great tips here. So subscribe to my channel. I appreciate you guys making it to the end. And uh, if you have any questions about your Miata, by all means, you know, send me a message and I'll make a video on it. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye now.